Hey, hey, this is episode two of Wrestle! Wrestle! And I'm still working out my release schedule for this one. Right now, I'm just kind of, I'm winging it right now. And I'm still working on the website, the website design. And uh, right now, my tentative release schedule is basically, uh, and this seems a little lopsided even now to me. I decided I was going to wait until Monday night to do this particular episode because... Uh, we had SmackDown on Friday, Money in the Bank on Sunday, and Raw on Monday. So I was like, instead of doing three episodes, I could have done that. I thought maybe I would just tackle all of WWE in one night and try to like blow through it. And so, actually, it does kind of fit in context because both Raw and SmackDown fit into Money in the Bank. So I can kind of talk about all three in context. I think it works. Um, and then maybe I would do like a TNA episode as uh, on like Thursday night. I thought I thought I could do that. Maybe I might switch it around to where I do like SmackDown and uh, TNA on like Saturday and then do like Raw and any pay-per-view on Monday. Still working it out. Other news, um, I'm still getting the website set up and I don't think this is going to be a one-man show. And I'm not sure I can promise any regular updates. Like I said, I'm going to try to do the Wrestle Wrestle at least twice a week if I can. Um... Give or take, maybe depending on pay-per-view releases and just if I'm really trying to get crunching on a Spoonie Experiment review. Um, I'm also looking into getting other correspondents just for differing viewpoints on certain things. Like, uh, like I'm definitely looking for a mixed martial arts correspondent to at least like write articles and maybe do recaps of mixed martial arts shows. I'm into mixed martial arts myself, but it's too much workload even for me. Um, perhaps someone to do like maybe Ring of Honor recaps... Um, whether in the form of video or just written blogs, um, don't write in yet asking if you want to be that guy because I'm not. Sh I, I'm still not sure what format the show is going to take. So um, if if you write in saying you want to be a correspondent, I probably won't even look at it at this point just because I'm still working out what I want to do. So I'm not sure, um, and I'll probably I'll probably look into uh, guys I've worked before with before in the past just so I have this working relationship with them. So I'll, I'll probably ask some guys um, whether or not they're interested in, in, in helping out with the site at all. Um, anyway, so if you weren't aware, this was the big Money in the Bank weekend for WWE. I did not see it. Uh, I was busy with Dungeons and & Dragons and doing my own geek stuff, and I saw Inception. Um, I did read recaps of, of Money in the Bank. In the future, I will attempt to see the pay-per-views um, now that I'm, I'm trying to get this working as a, as a money machine, you know, trying to, trying to get some advertising on this thing. Once I get some advertising up, I'll probably be able to afford uh, pay-per-views at least so I, can, so I can buy them and watch them and, and tell you what I thought personally. But Money in the Bank, I really think... Um, actually, I, I probably will end up checking Money in the Bank out just because I'm kind of interested in the ladder matches, but we'll see. So I, I, this, I, I'm going to review SmackDown first. I'm going to get my notes and... I hated SmackDown. I really hated it bad. Uh, this show sucked. Uh, especially since this was the big show hyping the pay-per-view. And actually, I thought they did an okay job hyping the individual Money in the Bank matches. Um, I said, The general story of the show is whether or not Swagger has an alibi for the night Taker was crippled and put into a vegetative state. And I don't care about the Undertaker's vegetative state. <laughs> I never cared about it. I thought it was a bad idea from the beginning. And so, they like every fucking week they're doing this thing with the cane, trying to find out who crippled the Undertaker, when everyone in the world knows that it was Kane. And, like, it's it, like when it started, and Kane came out saying, like, I will destroy anyone who did this to Undertaker, my brother, and we're like, boo-hoo, we know it was you. So it's just kind of been this this long, tedious exercise week after week after week, putting up with this story where the audience is literally four months ahead of the curve when it comes... To, like, it, it's, it's kind of silly, like, you've got this story and you kind of... Like, somebody's telling a joke and you're like, I've heard this joke before, and the guy continues to tell a joke. It's that sad. Nobody cares about this one. Um, the first match was Kofi versus Dashing Cody Rhodes, and I have to admit, I really couldn't give a shit about Cody Rhodes before this, but... And this is a really generic gimmick, where he's like, he's a, he's a heel who's like, I look really good and you don't. It's like the most basic heel gimmick ever. But I have to admit, I'm kind of digging the dashing Cody Rhodes gimmick, just because I like the entrance. And I like the really, like, uh, 90210 
uh, Smoke and Mirrors song that he comes out to. I think it is really, it is sufficiently douchebagginess. And I think Cody is kind of finding this smarmy grin about him that really is effective. So if you don't know, he does this thing where on the entranceway, this big digital mirror appears. It's not a really a mirror, but it looks like a, it's like a picture of a mirror. So he comes out, he looks into this mirror, and this gigantic image of him appears on the LED lights to the left of it. And so it's like he's checking himself out in this big mirror, and it, I, I got a chuckle out of it. I like it. Um, I still don't know why Cody has the Triforce of Power on his boots. Um, they had a really good match until Kane's Pyro goes off and he chases everyone off. Um, I, I wrote, does anyone give a shit about Kane or suddenly believe that he has become this top-level destroyer? And the quote of the night for me that I still... I kind of wish I had a soundbite of this was that Kane gets in the ring, grabs the mic, and he says, I have an official update. Tonight, there will be a bludgeoning. I just... I, I rewound and watched that bit again because he said, tonight, there will be a bludgeoning. Okay, right on, Kane. Um, they had a recap of Ray's ankle injury, and I hated this segment, too. It was the last week where the story is Swagger, ever since he lost the title because of Nexus, he's kind of snapped. And he's he's promised to make everyone suffer, and so he's doing this thing where he's putting everyone in the ankle lock because that's his big death blow move now is the ankle lock. So he... he he hurt Big Show with the ankle lock, and now he's hurting Rey Mysterio. But now what he did, he did this thing where he breaks into the trainer's room, he grabs Rey by the ankle, and honest to God, starts dragging him by the ankle, like, all over the fucking arena, like, just, like, pulling him around. Like, he, he pulls him down the, all, the aisleway, pulls him down the, pulls him down the ramp, pulls him in the ring, he's like, ankle lock! And Rey's like, Rey's, like, just completely helpless before this guy. He's like, no! Like, that's your world champion, ladies and gentlemen. The guy who's, like, he is getting, li he's getting dragged around like me. I used to drag my little brother around, who now could kick my ass, but whatever. Um... Ray pretends... Okay, so they go back and, like, Ray pretends he's certain he's going to forfeit the title, and they hold that tension for all five seconds before he says, No, I'm not serious. Of course not. I'm not going to forfeit. I'm going to fight. And uh, Drew McIntyre beats Christian with a thumb to the eye. Actually, another very good match. The wrestling on this show was very good. And, like I said, if they just shut up and wrestle, I wouldn't have nearly much of a problem with this show. <laughs> oh. Oh, this... I am remembering... Why I got mad. Okay. The Straight Edge Society comes out. And if you don't know, they, uh, the Straight Edge Society's been having problems because apparently Serena's been drinking. Which is not Straight Edge. So, he comes out and Punk's wearing his mask and he says, uh, you know, despite what you've heard, we have had no problems in the Straight Edge Society. None. We're good. And so... Big Show comes out with his ladders, with, with a couple of ladders, and she says, he, Punk is putting America to sleep, saying he'd rather talk about exciting stuff like Money in the Bank. And Punk says, you know, you're right. I would rather talk about Money in the Bank because I would love to see you uh, get up on top of that ladder and do a 450, as in your 450-pound fat ass, what was it, quote, uh, quote, I want to see your 450-pound ass, quote, burble off the ladder and crash straight to the center of the earth. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um... So, Sho does this thing where he's demonstrating that he's too big to climb up the ladder. So, like, he puts his foot down on a ladder and his foot goes right through it. And he's like, I'm too big. Like, how does he sit down on chairs? Me too big! And so, he takes this step ladder out and he's too big for the step ladder. And so, he's like, I, I have had a ladder custom made. And so, he has this squad of like eight dudes bring this I think he said it was a 350 pound ladder with a 2,000 pound capacity and so it's this big black ladder it's the magnum of ladders you know it's the ultra ladder so he starts climbing up and Punk starts distracting Sho and the Straightest Society jumps him Sho makes his comeback starts beating him up but Sho like you know he's the giant you know he's like ah he beats up Punk and so Punk's on top of the ladder. Show's got him by the neck. And he pulls his mask off, revealing his bald head. And Punk just starts weeping. He's like, ah, I'm bald and I'm ashamed. I'm bald. 
And I wrote, they did this on free TV. They didn't have a match to build it up. No mask removal match. It's not the resolution of a feud, and officially nothing is accomplished. They have ruined the storyline. They've just, they've completely trashed it. You know, when, when you've got this gimmick about a guy who has a mask, he won't take his mask off, you're supposed to do this. You have to have this lead to something. You have to have a match where you're like, if I win, I'm going to take them. That's, that, that's why you have hair matches. So you have this blow off to a feud where a guy gets his hair cut off. or That's why you have matches. So at the end, you can have the resolution to a match. Something is accomplished. Nothing was accomplished here. You showed Punk getting his mask off for no reason. He's bald. And yes, he's still bald after like four weeks of having his head shaved bald. So apparently, he was so ashamed of being bald, he continued to shave his head to get that regular shine. I don't know. Like, you'd think after like four weeks, he'd just kind of pull his hair off, pull his mask off and go like, I got hair now, see? It'd be like, it'd be like a half inch to a full inch of hair, but he would have hair. It wouldn't be that bad. But no, he's like completely Mr. Clean, but he's got the pirate beard still. This hurt my brain. So, oh, I'm going to read my notes verbatim for this one. Trent Beretta and Layla versus Chris Masters and Kelly Kelly. True fact, toilet usage worldwide just increased by a factor of 3,000. This was your bathroom break match. Trent Beretta and Layla versus... I can't believe fucking Trent Beretta's employed. Who the fuck is Trent Beretta? <laughs> um, Rosa Mendez comes to the ring jumping rope, distracting everyone. Layla hits... Uh, Kelly hits Layla with the rocker dropper. Wins. Matt Hardy versus Dolph Ziggler, and suddenly everyone returning from the bathroom reevaluates whether or not they should go back and take that shit after all. Oh. I'm sorry, it's been like it's it's been three days since I've read these notes. And so I've I have forgotten all the things that made me so mad. And now I'm remembering. Because every time Stryker says something stupid, I make a note of it. This is the stupidest thing Stryker said all week. I said Fucking Stryker refers to Dolph Ziggler's fans as dolphins. Nine. Ten. Jack Swagger brings Pappy Swagger to the ring and says he can prove that... Oh! I rem there's something else I remembered. The big story, like I said, the big story is Kane is going to kill Jack Swagger if he can't prove that he has an alibi. This was set up last week. So, last week what happened was that uh, Swagger is beating up the big show. He is, like, breaking his ankle. He's got him in the ankle lock. He DDTs his foot on the ramp. And he's like, oh, my ankle, my ankle. And Swagger's like, I fucking told you! I fucking cripple you! I'm like fucking Jack Swagger! I'll kill you! And so... Immediately after that, Kane comes out of nowhere, grabs him by the throat, throws him into a room that's bathed in red light. He set this up. And so he's like, what did you do to my brother? He's like Christian Bale. He's like, where are the drugs? Swear to me. And like Kane is like, swear to me you didn't do The Undertaker. You didn't beat him up. He's a vegetable. And immediately, Jack Swagger, the ultimate badass for the last two weeks, who's been like breaking ankles, taking names, crippling the world champion, crippling the giant big show. As soon as Kane grabs him by the throat and throws him in a chair, Jack Swagger starts to weep like a child. Just weeping. Oh, I didn't do it. I didn't hurt the other thing. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and I'm like, this dude... He's beaten up the world champion. He's shown no fear in, in confronting the big show and making him mad, breaking his ankle. Shown no fear of this guy. But Kane! Oh no. Kane, stop that man. Stop the big bald man from hurting me, mommy. Kane is just a scary dude. 
not buying it. It makes swagger. It makes the writers look retarded. If you're going to have him be afraid of Kane, you can't have him show no fear of the Big Show. Big Show outweighs Kane by like 150 pounds. <laughs> He's like, I don't... What the fuck? So, like... Okay, so he brings his dad out, or at least someone claiming to be his dad. And so they're like, we have an alibi. I didn't beat up The Undertaker because I have photos of me uh, doing things like uh, going fishing... Uh, going to a chicken wing eating contest and like running he's like I didn't do it I ran a 5k see my dad came in second and so they're like these really bad photoshop pictures of him running a 5k and stuff like that Kane doesn't buy it he comes out and he uh, he choke slams Pappy Swagger and tombstones him and again I get confused by the booking here I'm like I know Jack Swagger's supposed to be an asshole I know he's the heel here, but here you have Kane, who, <sighs> he's supposed to be a good guy, I think, and he's choke slamming and tombstoning a helpless 65-year-old man, and people are cheering this, and I'm like, how is, how is beating up the elderly supposed to make this guy a babyface, a guy who essentially did nothing wrong, and so... I asked what the hell this has to do with promoting Chain's chances at, uh, at Money in the Bank or Swagger's match against Ray. I said, you're not alone in wondering that. And at Money in the Bank, I've heard it's actually a really good show. And yet, reading the recaps, I almost don't want... I, I really... I, I've heard the matches are good, but the results... The results are the exact kind of results that, upon watching them would make me so mad because fucking Kane won money in the bank. And then after Rey Mysterio pulls the uh, pulls a play out of Eddie Guerrero's the late Eddie Guerrero's playbook and escapes the ankle lock and rolls up Swagger to win this match, like at WrestleMania, I believe. Kane comes out, fucking destroys Rey Mysterio. And wins the World Heavyweight Championship in, like, under a minute. And the world collectively face palms. Just. Already Kane has had a longer title run than his last major title run, which was, I believe, in the mid-90s. Probably 1998, 1996. Something like that. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Kane's last World Championship run was about a day. <laughs> and then I think he lost it right back to Steve Austin. I can't remember. It was either Mankind or Steve Austin, but I know it was not a long run. But yeah, this is in 2010, about 13 to 15 years after the fact, Kane is your world heavyweight champion again. Oh my God. I thought it couldn't get any worse than Jack Swagger. I thought they couldn't book Rey Mysterio to look any worse than the last time he had the world championship. Oh, I can always be proven wrong by these assholes. I hate being wrong. I don't want to be wrong. I... Why, Kane? Why? Just... <laughs> Tune into SmackDown and see your world champion, Kane. I hate my job sometimes. So, the rest of it ties into Raw. Um, the show kicks off with a really excellent match. Probably one of the best matches I've seen all year, which was a triple threat for the number one contender at SummerSlam, Randy Orton versus Chris Jericho versus Edge. Uh, sto the story here is that both of the heels are pretty much beating up on Orton early. Um, because they're all beat up from Money in the Bank, but none of them like Orton. So, uh, Orton needs a code breaker early. There's blood in the water, so they both are trying to beat up Orton. They're trying to beat each other up, but they're mainly focusing on trying to beat Orton so they can, they can pin him. Uh, so there's, there was a, I, I think a lot, most triple threats do this where like everyone kind of hits their finishers, but actually in this regard, everyone was kind of saving each other from all the finishers before they were hit. So like, you know, Edge is lining up for the spear, Jericho like Superman dives in and like blocks the spear, 
you know, uh, the, the Jericho's got the walls of Jericho in, and he gets the he eats Impaler DDT, and in the end, Orton pretty much kills both of them with an RKO, and I was like, that's a pretty decisive finish that really put Orton over strong. Very good match. Great match, actually. Really liked it, especially since I have not been impressed with Orton as of late at all, and in fact, I still do not understand Orton's babyface turn at all. Strike that. I don't understand why it's working. People are chanting RKO. People are fired up about this guy. And the only thing I can think of is that the audience is kind of using him as a Steve Austin surrogate. Like, he's this heel who's just killing everyone, so they're kind of cheering him because he's just that badass. But man, he does not act like a face. He acts like a complete... Like sneering heel, like all the time, like he's he's like seething and drooling, like like he just wants to cripple people, and I'm like that's kind of heel behavior, but people are buying it. I don't know. I guess I can't complain. Uh, Edge is still after the commercial break. Edge is still in the ring. He calls Jericho out, saying all this shit has to end. They've been fighting each other for eleven years, costing them titles, so it has to end like right now. And so Jericho comes out. He says like I agree, and it's gonna end because I have the nexus on my side. I, I was Wade Barrett's mentor. Like, he owes everything to me. The Nexus owes everything to me, and that's why they succeed. Nexus comes out. They say, like, Jericho's absolutely right. You're going to die. So they beat up, and they kill Edge. They throw him out, and they say, like, yeah, but by the way, we don't owe you shit. And so they beat up Jericho. So that's, like, that's the story is, like, you can't trust the Nexus. Already this storyline's getting kind of old, but... um. What was it? Uh, oh, they head back to the locker room. Josh Matthews stops Wade and says they have, quote, the most powerful group in the history of the WWE, and everyone quakes in their boots at your approach. I was like, wow, they really... That's kind of a bold statement. The fact that the, the announcer is saying most powerful group in the history of WWE, that's, that's saying quite a lot, especially considering you have... The WWF has a long history, like the natural disasters... Uh, evolution, hell, Degeneration X that kind of dominated stuff for a long time. Even the two-man power trip was kind of a show-stopping proposition. The corporation, corporate ministry, like you could kind of tear all those down and say like, Nexus ain't shit compared to them, and they're not. Um, so it, like, oh, uh, I'll get to this, but uh, later tonight, Wade Barrett does a match against Mark Henry, and so Wade says he doesn't sweat Mark. Uh, Seamus approaches, says he's got a proposition. They throw to Cena backstage. Uh, Cena's got this cut over his nose from the cage match. And he says, uh, nobody can, be can compete with the Nexus, and he can't beat him. So he wants to meet Wade Barrett in the middle of the ring. And he says, like, he's basically going to, he, like, I can't beat him, so I'm going to join him. Nobody in the world was buying this. I promise you. There may have been, like, a four-year-old kid in, in Alaska somewhere who was like, Cena's going to quit? No. But no. <laughs> like, everyone in the audience is like, oh, Cena's just going to come out and kick their asses. So, like, I, again, you got this thing where you, you're kind of trying to swerve the audience, and the audience is so not swerved. And it, like, the, it only serves to make the bad guys look intensely stupid for buying into it. <laughs> Which is what happens. Eve versus Maurice, and I was like, wow, they put the bathroom break early in this uh, show. Ted sits commentary and talks about being rich, although the significance of the million dollar title belt still baffles me. Oh, that reminds me. Shit, I forgot to mention this in my Inception review. In the in the Inception uh, movie, Joseph Gordon-Levitt puts a dude in the million dollar dream and chokes his ass out. And I was like, that's the best thing ever. I, I marked out like a schoolgirl for that. If I... Watch the Inception review. Watch Inception. Then, like, it's the million dollar dream. I think it's the million dollar dream. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he, he, like, chokes a bitch out. Joseph Gordon-Levitt chokes a bitch. Okay. Anyway. Nah, I got so fired up by that. Um, Eve wins. Maurice has her leg on the bottom rope, but the ref doesn't see it. Ted corners the referee to protest, and John Morrison attacks him for some reason. Probably made a lot more sense if you saw Money in the Bank. Didn't make sense here. Um, Seamus comes to the ring, says he's negotiated a truth with the, truce with the Nexus. Um, Cena lost his match. He's going to the back of the line. And without Nexus interference, Orton doesn't stand a chance at SummerSlam. Miz comes out, cuts a pretty predictable promo. Effective, but predictable. 
saying, you know, I can cash this in anytime I want. I can cash it in today. Cash it in tomorrow. Might not cash it in at all till WrestleMania. I'm watching. He says, he says, I'm your new celebrity stalker. Every move you make, every step you take, I'll be watching you. Although Miz said a lot better than I did. A little more creepy. And then the fucking mail from the anonymous general manager. I swear to God, every time this happens, I have the urge to just reach for a knife and stab myself in the leg until the hurting stops. The crowd shits on this every single time it happens. And I'm actually convinced that the crowd shits on it so much they should do it like 30 times a night just so the crowd fucking hates this general manager when he finally reveals himself. He, like, every time the mail arrives, it's the iPhone text message sound that comes out. It's like, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> The lights dim, and Cole has to, has to make this big announcement. He's like, hold on, everybody, hold on. Email from the general manager. And I quote. And the general manager says, you know, Miz, if you're planning on cashing in your money in the bank anytime soon, you might want to sit ringside because Sheamus is in action, again, uh, in action tonight against Evan Braun. And I'm like... Oh no! The guy Seamus regularly and decisively beats is coming to the ring! Not Evan Braun! And sure enough, Seamus pretty much kills Evan. Uh, but Evan makes an out of nowhere comeback. Um, has him beat until Seamus hits a low blow and then does his little bicycle kick thing and beats him. So Miz is like, Miz is like, bravo, bravo, Seamus is posing. Miz blindsides him with the briefcase, hits the stroke on the briefcase, and then he's like, Oh, he's beat! Oh, ref! Ref, come down quick! Ref, come So, like, the ref comes down, and he's like, I'm doing my thing! Like, here's the contract! Do the thing! Do the thing! And so, like, the ref, the announcer announces that uh, Miz is cashing in his money in the bank, and then our truth starts coming down. And the story here is that Miz beat up our truth and injured him and put him out of the Money in the Bank match. And so, like, Miz is like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And so Miz completely drops his fudge. And, like, he starts freaking out. He's like, no, I need a big black man coming. Black man scary. And so, like, he starts running around. He grabs his briefcase. He's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And he's like, he runs away like a, like a frightened gazelle. And I'm like, can he do that? After they announce it, can he? I guess he can. So they go backstage, and Miz is like, I got all year, motherfuckers, because I'm the Miz! And, you know. But, yeah, so they're, they're, I think they're going to do this thing where, like, he's going to keep... I actually thought they were going to do this with Swagger, because Swagger pulled the same thing, where, like, he, he tried to beat Cena, forgetting that Cena is the last son of Krypton. Uh, and then... And then Cena came back, and Swagger was like, "I'm not doing it. I, I changed my mind." And he runs off. So the, I, I think they're gonna do this thing with Miz, where he like keeps he keeps stalking Sheamus and like getting opportunities, and then something happens, like our truth keeps coming out, or somebody interferes, and like Nexus comes out, and he's like, "I changed my mind," and runs off. And yeah, I think we're I think we're in the long haul for Miz with the money in the bank, kind of choosing his moment. Uh, oh shit. Santino versus Co Santino and Kozlov versus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. How long was I out? I wasn't out long enough because it was Santino and Kozlov versus Zack Ryder and William Regal. Uh, I know a lot of people like Santino. I don't see it. Santino plays a huge wuss and lets Kozlov do all the work. Um, the end of the match comes with Kozlov laying out Ryder with a spine buster. Santino tags in and hits, I swear to God, the stupidest move I've seen since the Juice's elbow when Juventud Guerrera did the like the ripoff of the people's elbow. Stupidest move since the worm. And you gotta get pretty stupid to top the worm. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that. My TV spontaneously started talking to me. Anyway. So Santino does this thing where he basically sets up for the people's elbow. He, like he stands over the guy and he's kind of like, mm, and he bounces off one rope and he bounces off the other and he kind of does the rimmer salute and then headbutts. He he does like a diving headbutt as he's doing the rimmer salute. And he, boom! And Zack Ryder laid down for that. Zack. You might want to get those future endeavors ready. Anyway. You know, if I was a wrestler, and I'm not, but if I were, 
And I had to lay down to Santino Morella and his diving rimmer salute. I'd have a shotgun in my mouth. Oh, yeah. In fact, just watching this match made me want to ease myself into some lukewarm bath water, turn on some Chopin music, and relax as the music slowly allows me to drift away as I take a razor blade and vertically slice down my wrists and watch as the water slowly turns pink. That's what a Santino match does to me. And that's also what, uh, by the way, while I'm thinking about Money in the Bank, Alicia Fox needs to be in jail. Because she has committed crimes against wrestling so severe, they're too numerous to list here. This woman... I think I may have posted a Twitter thing about this. Alicia Fox must be stopped. Like... Have you seen her matches? No, I mean, you don't even need to look that close. Just watch one. Any one, it doesn't matter. This woman, her finishing move, if you've ever seen a Booker T match, you know how he does the, uh, the kind of axe kick where the guy's doubled over and he's like, ha, and he like kicks him in the back of the head. I never fully appreciated how well Booker T pulled that move off and how effortlessly he did that move until I saw Alicia Fox attempt that move every night for about three months. And it only gets worse. Alicia Fox is going to kill someone in that ring. Kill them dead! I, I'm not even joking. Like, it's not funny watching this woman attempt this axe kick. She... It's to the point where she, like, not only is she completely failing to... It's not that she's failing to connect with the axe kick. No, she's connecting with the axe kick. She's connecting the fuck out of it. But she's also doing this thing where, like, she's not only, like, kicking them in the back of the head. She's, like, strangling them with her calf, landing on the small of their back with her ass, and then, like, sitting on their head as they hit the mat. It's, like, the most catastrophic car wreck of an axe kick. I've ever seen in my life. Stop this woman. I don't know what the fuck they see in her. She is a danger to herself and others. She is going to get someone paralyzed or killed. Mark my words. You're going you're gonna to see a match where after she wins this match, the diva is out permanently with a neck injury. And I don't want to see that. I'm serious. Like, stop this woman. She is going to hurt somebody. Fucking Lisa. She was not on this show, thank God, but Eve Torres was also one of the most boring divas I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, right. Here we are. Mark Henry versus Wade Barrett. God-awful match. And I'll give you a hint. It's because it had Mark Henry in it. Um, definitely, this is what I wrote. Definitely not what the audience sees, needs to see. Definitely not what the audience needs to see to showcase the Nexus threat or Wade Barrett's wrestling ability. He's better than this. The finish came when Mark Henry has Wade Barrett beat. He's on the middle rope, eclipsing the fucking sun. And he's got... God knows what he was intending to do on the middle rope. I can only assume he was just going to squish him like an ice cream cone on the sidewalk. Like, ah. Oh. Maybe do the Rimmer Salute drop. I don't know. the mode Or the fucking Cobra. The fuck is the Cobra? Anyway, so... Like, he, he's about to just fucking annihilate Wade Barrett. Which is just what you want from your top heel, is to get killed by Mark Henry. Nexus comes and appears on the ramp. Distracts the hell out of Mark Henry, even though they didn't really do anything. And then, Wade Barrett... And you knew this wasn't going to happen as soon as he started to do it. You know, like, sometimes you can just tell, like... Oh, this isn't happening. And Wade Barrett's a big guy. He's a really big fucking guy. In fact, he's probably comparable to The Undertaker in size. He's big. But he does this thing where, like, t uh, Mark Henry's on the middle rope. And he's trying to kind of fireman's carry Mark Henry over his shoulder. Like, he's got his head here. And he's got his legs here. And he's going to try to, like, carry him. But Mark Henry weighs about 3,000 pounds because he's, like, the biggest biggest dude 
fuck in fucking history. So he's got this. He's trying to pick this guy up, and Mark Henry's like holding on the ropes because like he knows he doesn't have it. He's like ah, and so Wade Barrett he does this thing where he kind of just throws the guy over his head and slams him. It's it's a really basic slam actually. So you can tell like so not happening, and it it didn't happen. Like it was just <laughs> what did I write? What did I write? I said. Somehow, somehow, Wade pulls off the scariest fucking slam of his life, and he looks like he's seriously thrown out his lower back trying to fling that huge ass fucker. <laughs> so he like he does this thing where he's like, ah, oh, and he kind of like falls, and he like he managed not to make Mark Henry f- just s- crush his head like a grape. He somehow managed to fall where like Mark Henry hit the ground. First, he's like, oh, boom, and Wade comes back, and he's like, ah, ah, mistake, mistake, and like the whole time, you can see him like, he calls Nexus out. He's like, I just, oh, and so like he calls Cena out. Cena comes out looking all sheepish and like, hey, you beat me. I don't know what to do, and nobody's buying it. And so Cena's like, I. You beat me. I I can't do anything. You're you're big and strong, and I'm just I'm your redheaded stepchild. And I don't want to do. And I need a truth. Please, please don't hurt me anymore. And Wade Barrett's like, I don't want to do that. We want you to join us because if you're not Nexus, you're against us. And so Cena's like, I can't do that. I I have my integrity. And Wade's like, then get the fuck out of here. And so. Cena's like, I'll, I'll go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Still, nobody's buying it. Like I said, it re- the this, this show really sucks when you've had this whole thing. Y- you know what's going to happen. And so, like, Cena, of course, halfway through the ramp, he goes, Oh, by the way, I was just testing you. Because I have assembled a team in secret. The team of the, gal- the galaxy's ultimate badasses. And they will defeat you at SummerSlam and make the Nexus history. And so the team is... What is it? Edge, John Morrison, R-Truth, Great Kali, Chris Jericho, and... Oh my god, Bret Hart! Bret Hart's back! He's gonna beat the Nexus! Yay! I'd still take Bret, over, Bret Hart over Michael Tarver. I will admit that. Um, I Out of nowhere, I wrote... What the hell is up with Darren Young's hair? He used to do this thing where he had it like all spiked up and like pointing straight up, like some kind of like uh, I don't know what he had. It, like, it was all spiked up, and so now he's just kind of let it go. He stopped coloring it. He stopped pointing it straight up, and now it it, it literally looks like he's the uh, I, he looks like uh, the the scarecrow from Wizard of Oz if the scarecrow were black, like. He has like like straw like hair that kind of like go. It, it's like st- it's still straight, like really straight. But it it's like it like if Mo Howard like had really really like pointy straight hair. I don't know. It looked like the scarecrow. Anyway, I was like I don't know what the deal is with that. So yeah, I said Cena goes down. Da- Cena comes down wearing a shirt that says "Never Give Up." I wonder if he's going to give up. Um. I like how the Nexus also looks simply shocked that anyone would dare team up to oppose them. And then when Bret Hart hit the ring, they were like, run! And they like just, ah! And they started running. So yeah, good wrestling on the show, but just about the most predictable uh, Raw I've seen in a long time. <laughs> predictable, not always. I mean, like I said, wasn't too bad, but... There wasn't a lot like you it, you didn't miss anything. Like if you could if you just fast forwarded to the matches, you wouldn't have missed anything. Like like you know, Miz kind of came out to show that he had money in the bank and then he was a chicken shit and they set up a match against SummerSlam, which actually probably would have been better served as a, as a Survivor Series match, although I don't know if they're even doing Survivor Series anymore. But yeah. Kane's your new world champion and the crowd goes mild. <laughs> okay. I'm all done for this week's uh, this uh, WWE edition of Wrestle Wrestle. Um, I'll probably I'll probably end up checking Money in the Bank out, and I'll let you know what I think of it. So until next time, TNA awaits. <laughs>